Hi, welcome to our King's College of Engineering. Myself, R. Sundaram, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, King's College of Engineering, Punal Kulam. In this video, we will see about effect of meteorology on air pollution. Effect of meteorology on air pollution. The concentration of uh, air pollutant uh, in a particular area from various sources from various sources depends highly on uh, local weather conditions. Mainly the factors that change the concentration of uh, air pollutant in a particular area uh, is called meteorological factors. Yes, the factors which change the concentration of air pollutants in a particular area or in a particular zone are called meteorological factors of air pollution. The uh, degree of uh, air pollution may vary even though uh, the total emissions into the atmosphere uh, in a given area remain same from uh, day to day uh, due to changes in meteorological conditions. The meteorological data is very essential uh, for air pollution studies and the objectives of studying meteorological factors are to identify uh, the sources of pollutant and to predict the uh, pollute, pollution event uh, such as high concentration days and to stimulate uh, the, and to predict the air quality using some computer models and to determine stack height and, determined, uh, and to determine the intensity of air pollution etc. These are the main objectives to study about the meteorological factors. There are some important meteorological parameters that will uh, influence the air pollution. Uh, it is classified as uh, two types. Uh, one is primary parameter and second one is secondary parameters. Then what are all the parameters comes under primary parameters means I mean what are the factors comes under primary parameter means wind speed and direction temperature, atmospheric stability, mixing height and what are all the factors comes under secondary parameters means rainfall and precipitation, humidity, solar radiations and visibility. Mainly the meteorological factors highly depends on the latitude, uh, season and the topography of the area. Yes. First one, the wind speed and direction. The speed and direction of wind uh, changes the uh, concentration of pollutant, uh, especially near the ground level. But the high speed of wind carries away the pollutant uh, at or uh, near the point of emissions. The emitted air pollutant uh, easily get diluted uh, with a high volume of the atmospheric air. But the speed of dilution process is highly depends on the speed and direction of the wind only. Alternatively, when the wind speed is low, the pollutant concentrate the area at or near the point of discharge. But the wind speed is low. Then the gustiness. Gustiness is one of the important characteristics. Um, it is one of the important characteristics of surface. Uh, surface wind uh, because it determines the action um, to which uh, the pollutant are uh, diluted and uh, mixed with uh, surroundings here. But it is uh, uh, directly proportional to uh, wind speed. But the concentration of pollutant uh, is uh, inversely proportional to the wind speed. Only the dilution of the pollutant only uh, directly proportional to wind speed, but the concentration of pollutant is inversely proportional to wind speed. In uh, plain terrain, the wind speed and direction uh, near the source uh, decide the subsequent uh, movement of the pollutant. But um, in hilly terrains, uh, hills may deflect uh, the air flow either horizontally uh, or vertically or both and the quantity of deflection depends on uh, the vertical stability of the atmosphere only. But the wind speed, the wind speed uh, can be measured 
by using uh, anemometer by using an anemometer and at the height of anemometer will be z not by measuring wind speed uh, u not at anemometer height uh, z not the wind speed u uh, can be calculated at any other uh, height uh, will be calculated at any other height uh, z uh, by using the given formula uh, u equal to u not into z by z not power k in this z not uh, will be anemometer height and z is height where the wind speed is to be measured and u not is the wind speed at anemometer height z not and k will be the wind speed constant it will be 1 by 9 for larger lab state and 1 by 3 uh, for marked inversion but normally it is taken as 1 by 7 the next uh, atmospheric stability and the inversions yes atmospheric stability uh, is mainly defined as uh, to measure the uh, atmospheric tendency uh, to encourage or discourage the uh, vertical motion and the um, and the vertical mo uh, vertical motion and the vertical motion is uh, directly related to uh, different types of weather conditions and its severity but the degree of atmospheric stability is mainly determined by the temperature difference uh, between the air portion and the air surrounding in it. For uh, every thousand feet uh, increase in altitude, the temperature decreases uh, by about uh, 3.5 degree Fahrenheit, uh, that is uh, 6.4 degree uh, Celsius per kilometer. But the rate uh, at which the atmosphere, atmospheric temperature uh, decreases with the increase in the altitude is called lab state. Lab state is nothing but the rate at which the atmospheric temperature decreases with increase the altitude. Uh, that is called lab state. When the lab state, um, when the reverse or uh, negative lab state occurs, um, a dense uh, cold stratum, dense uh, cold stratum of uh, air at uh, ground level gets covered by lighter warm, uh, lighter warm air at higher levels. But this concept is called inversions because it is a negative lab state, no. So, during the inversion, uh, vertical air movement is stopped and the pollution will be concentrated below the inversion layer. Um, due to this, uh, um, due to this uh, temperature inversion, the atmosphere is stable and the every little mixing of air with the pollutant takes place. But this is called atmospheric stability and at this conditions, uh, the pollutant in the air do not dilute. But occurring of inversion is very common in winter and also in autumn. The reason before winter and after summer. At the time of inversion, visibility is highly reduced and the pollutants are at maximum. Then, um, the types of, uh, there are different types of inversion. Uh, already we know that uh, what are, uh, what is inversion? Yes, huh? uh, the negative lab state. The negative lab state or reverse lab state occurs in a dense cold stratum of air at ground level gets covered by uh, lighter warm air at higher levels. This concept is called inversions uh, because it is uh, inversely proportional to that lab state, you know. So, it is called inversion. There are two uh, types of inversions. One is uh, radiation inversions and second one is subsidence inversion. In radius inversion, uh, inversion occurring at night when uh, the earth when the, uh, when earth loses its uh, heat uh, by radiation and cools the air and in contact with it is called radiation inversion. Uh, in radiation inversion only the cool air stratum is covered by uh, lighter warm air and the vertical air movement is stopped until the sun warms the lower air in the next morning. But radiation inversion is very common in winter than summer uh, because due to uh, reduced day times. Uh, due to this restriction of uh, horizontal uh, air movement by surrounding high, con uh, high ground, the radiation inversion may frequently occur in uh, valley areas. Then the subsidence inversion, um, inversion occur at uh, moderate altitudes and uh, often remains uh, for uh, several days uh, caused by uh, sinking or subsiding of um, air anticyclones. The anticyclones are high pressure areas uh, surrounded by low pressure areas. The air circulating 
um, around the area depends on slowly at the rate of about a thousand meter per day. Then the mixing height, third one, mixing height. Uh, mixing height is uh, defined as the height uh, above the earth's surface uh, to which uh, the related pollutants uh, will extend. Primarily uh, through the action of uh, atmospheric turbulence. But it is usually related to one or more other three factors that is wind speed, wind direction and wind turbulence. Then the precipitation and rainfall. This uh, precipitation and uh, rainfall is a uh, secondary meteorological factors uh, that the, um, the rainfall uh, accelerates the deposition of uh, uh, particulate matter on the ground and its concentration of gaseous pollutant um, which are uh, soluble in um, water uh, but the rainfall is estimated uh, by using uh, various rain causes. Uh, but the rainfall uh, precipitation is a uh, uh, rainfall or precipitation and rainfall precipitation is a uh, uh, secondary meteorological factors uh, that exert a two-fold cleansing action on the pollutant. Next, the humidity. Uh, humidity, the uh, humidity is the moisture content of the atmosphere. Humidity is the moisture content of the atmosphere. Uh, it uh, influences uh, some corrosive action of uh, air pollutant and it represents the uh, potentiality for fog formations mainly because it is a humidity no so it uh, uh, influence uh, it is directly uh, give a corrosive nature uh, with the uh, corrosive nature of the air pollutant and it will easily uh, affect the uh, steel like the uh, steel materials like then the last one is the radiation uh, solar uh, radiations uh, the solar radiations uh, gives the uh, chemical reactions between the atmospheric air components and the pollutants uh, in the reaction rate depend on the uh, location but the meteorological um, the main application of all these above five uh, meteorological factor may be considered um, in the control of pollutions from uh, industrial plant uh, in the selection of its uh, location uh, in the design equipment and its uh, regular operations Mainly these uh, meteorological factors are uh, used in the uh, layout of zones for industrial use and in identifying casual factors uh, in existing pollution problems and in establishing some air quality criteria. Mainly these are the um, um, effect, um, for various factors of uh, the meteorological uh, data. Yes, uh, in this video we are, um, we known about the various factors of meteorology on uh, air pollution. Okay, thank you.